What's up, everybody? Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Frank Stanfield alongside JJ Zacharias and to bring you some buy or sell players heading into week five. What's going on, JJ? Not too much, man. I'm glad that my Steelers finally got a victory last night. I'm ready for week five. Well, we wouldn't know that you're a Steelers fan based on one of the players on this list, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's start off with three buy candidates, specifically with DeAndre Hopkins, who's had some tougher matchups as of late. He's only the wide receiver 24 on the season, but you're telling fantasy owners to buy on D-Hop right now. Why is that? Yeah, so you just mentioned the matchups. He's already seen Jalen Ramsey, seen Casey Hayward. Uh, the offense didn't look very good against Carolina on Sunday, I'll give you that. But uh, Hopkins has still seen at least 20% of the team's targets in every game played this year. He's one of six wide receivers to accomplish that feat. Uh, I mean, it's DeAndre Hopkins. He gets Atlanta this week. He should bounce back. I think he's a clear buy. It's simple as that. He's DeAndre Hopkins. He was a mid-first round pick. You know the production is going to come sooner rather than later, and it could be as soon as this week going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Make sure you're buying DeAndre Hopkins. Let's move on to Carryon Johnson. No more C.J. Anderson in the mix for the Detroit Lions here. Carryon Johnson, we're seeing him used more in the red zone. J.J., why are you buying him? Do we see more receptions coming in the future as well? Yeah, so we can't really label him as a clear-cut bell cow right now because the target share is still under 7%, so that's not great. But without C.J. Anderson, uh, Carryon Johnson has basically hovered around the 80% rushing share mark, uh, running back rushing share mark, that is. Uh, but before that, uh, when C.J. Anderson was there, he was at 50% and 57% in the first two games of the season. And he's seeing all the red zone work, like you said. He's seeing all the goal line work, his five goal line rushes over the last two games. So right now is the time to buy because not only uh, is Carryon Johnson looking forward to a good matchup when the Lions are off their buy, uh, but at the same time, if you're sitting at 4-0 and or 3-1 and and the team with Carryon Johnson is maybe 0-4 or 1-3, and it's a perfect time to buy because he is on that bye week. Uh, so I love Carryon Johnson as a buy candidate this week. That's a really good point. If you can find a carry on Johnson owner who is two and two or worse, they have carry on Johnson on a buy right now. You can actually prey on that owner and try and acquire carry on Johnson right now. Looks like the clear leader in the backfield for the Detroit Lions. Last but not least, on the buys here, we have Hollywood Brown. That's Marquise Brown of the Baltimore Ravens. And admittedly, JJ, I missed out on Hollywood Brown putting him in my lineup in week one. I missed out on that production. I put him in the past couple of weeks, and it hasn't been nearly as good. So why are you buying Hollywood Brown heading into week five? Yeah, I can't quit Hollywood, man. I mean, the peripherals are just great. He has 25% of Baltimore's targets. Only Keenan Allen and Mike Evans have more air yards than Hollywood Brown to start the year. Those numbers should eventually just show, a, a, give him a blow up game. And that's really the main reason why I'm still buying Marquise Brown. Hopefully this is the last week we have to talk about him, uh, but the peripherals are strong enough to the point where you should be buying him. The target share is there for Hollywood Brown. The air yards are there. It's basically just Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews who are dominating targets for this Baltimore Ravens offense right now. So if you can find a fantasy owner who's panicking over Hollywood Brown right now, make sure to buy him. Let's move over to some of the sell candidates. And J.J. said that he was excited about the Pittsburgh Steelers' win on Monday Night Football, but he has James Conner as a sell. Looks like they were using Conner and Jalen Samuels pretty evenly in that matchup. J.J., why are you selling James Conner? Yeah, look, you drafted James Conner to be a bell cow back. And, and what we saw on Monday night was that he's not a bell cow back. They used Jalen Samuels a heck of a lot. James Conner did outsnap him by a decent margin. But at the same time, they both saw 10 carries. They both had eight receptions. So I think right now, given that this contest was against Cincinnati, one of the worst defenses in the league and one of the worst against running backs specifically, it's kind of a perfect time to just sell James Conner. Yeah, when it comes to James Conner, again, they split touches evenly, 18 touches each. If you include those pass attempts. They were more just like jet sweep handoffs from Jalen Samuels. He also had 21 touches overall. So James Conner, look, if you get RB1 return for him right now based on this game he just had against the Cincinnati Bengals, it's something that you should look into. Let's move over to two Seattle Seahawks players here, JJ. Will Disley, he was the chalk play last week going up against that dread, dreadful Arizona Cardinals defense. Why are you selling Will Disley after that performance? Yeah, I mean, realistically, I think Disley has a chance to be a tight end one this season or a top 10-ish uh, tight end, uh, especially without Nick Vanette, who was shot, uh, shipped over to Pittsburgh last week. Um, but look at the matchup. Arizona's been awful against tight ends to start the year. Disley had a 30% target share in that game. There's no way he's going to keep that up throughout the season. So if there's someone who's buying that performance in any way, shape, or form, I think it's fine to get rid of Will Disley and try to find a, a usable running back or wide receiver for him. 
So JJ likes Will Disley as a top 12 tight end, but he's not necessarily buying that performance that he had coming off a really, really good matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. Perhaps some touchdown regression coming his way as well. If you can get a running back or wide receiver for Will Disley, it's something that you should look into doing. Last but not least, on the sell column here, we have another Seattle Seahawk. That is Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, potentially returning this week going up against the Los Angeles Rams. JJ, why are you selling Chris Carson? Yeah, the last time that Rashad Penny was in that lineup against Pittsburgh in week two, Chris Carson had about 56% of Seattle's running back rushes. This past week, he was well over that. He was at 88% against Arizona. It was a plus matchup against Arizona. Chris Carson played well, but the fact that Rashad Penny is returning, the fact that Chris Carson has has uh, had some fumbling issues this season, I think there are enough red flags around Carson to sell him after this strong performance. Yeah, Carson coming off a really strong performance. Rashad Penny going to be back in the mix for whatever reason. Pete Carroll loves him some Chris Carson, but if you can get fair value for Carson right now, it's something that you should look into doing. For JJ Zacharyson, I am Frank Stanfield. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck heading into Week 5.